Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can deploy a Laravel application to your Cloudway server using a tool called Deployer. And this is super cool because you can create a new Laravel app and then you can make some changes to your application. And then once you want to deploy, you can just run this command that's dep deploy and you press enter and it will automatically deploy the latest changes up to your server, run the migrations and do all kinds of magical stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into it and I will show you how you can use Deployer to deploy your Laravel app to your Cloudway server. So right now I just have a default server that I created. I created a few videos back how you, to show you how you can create a simple Laravel server and Laravel application. It's pretty simple. You just go to add a new server. You say that you want a Laravel application and then within a matter of minutes you have a server. And then you also have an application right here in front of you with a live URL. And this URL goes to a Laravel application and Cloudways has just kind of customized the welcome page here. But this is a default Laravel application that we have on a server. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a new Laravel application. So I'm gonna do that just cause I want to show you from the very beginning. So I'm gonna say Laravel new and I'm going to call this Laravel deployer Cloudways. Okay, now after that app has been created, I can now navigate to Laravel-deployer-cloudways. Oh my goodness, if I could type, <laughs> cloudways.test. Okay, so here we are, we have our default Laravel application in front of us, uh, nothing too fancy. But now we want to install Deployer so we can deploy this app to our server. So if we learn how to install, I think we actually just click on download and it has the instructions right here. So I already have this installed, but hey, why don't I just go ahead and run through the whole thing again? So we'll go ahead and run that curl command and then we'll move the deployer into the user local bin. And now we can change the permissions. And now if we run this command called DEP, you'll see that we now have a few more commands in here. Uh, let me see, is that the right one? Let me go ahead and open up a new terminal. I'm going to go into my project. That was Laravel deployer cloudways. And I'm going to run the dep command. And it says that we have a few instructions here on how we can do that. Let's say that we were to run dep deploy. It's going to give us a message that the command is not defined. And that is because we actually need to first install the default Laravel recipe. So let's go ahead and search the documentation for how to deploy Laravel. So it says after that we have installed it, we should now be able to run this command. And let's go ahead and do that. And if I open this up, you'll see that we have a new file called deploy.php at the root of the directory. And this just includes the recipe for Laravel, and then it has a bunch of configs that we need to set. So going back here, uh, if we run that command again, you'll now see that we have quite a few more commands that we can use because it detects that we're in a Laravel application. So we have like artisan optimize, artisan migrate. And if you're curious about, you know, where all this stuff comes from, you can go ahead and check out the deployer repo and they have a whole inside of this la recipe, laravel.php, they have a list of instructions that they run once you deploy the Laravel application. Okay, so since we need to deploy this from a Git repo, we actually need to create a new Git repo for our project. This way we can push to that repo and then we can deploy it and the server will pull from a specific branch. So let's go ahead and create that repo. So heading on over to github.com slash the dev dojo. And I'm going to say new repo. Okay, so I want to call this repo say Laravel-deployer-cloudways. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make this public and I'm going to say create repository. Okay, and now I'll want to get init and then I'll want to add all the content inside of my project to this repo. And then I'm going to copy the rest of this and paste it in there. 
And after we do that, let's go ahead and refresh and we should see all of our code here in the repo. So this is on the main branch and I think that's by default what deployer has set. I think we can also, also specify which branch we want to deploy. So inside of this deploy.php, there are a few sections that we want to modify, which is the project repository, and we also want to change the host. So the repository is obviously going to be, we can go to code, and right now I'm gonna select the HTTPS version. And I'm going to paste this in here. And then the host is actually going to be our public IP address. So we can get that from our server that we booted up. So we have this IP address right here. So I'm going to paste that IP address. And then I'm also going to say that I want to specify the user that is going to log in. So the user is going to be this username right here. And then we'll say the deploy path. Let's go ahead and SSH into the machine so we can get the deploy path. So I will SSH with this user. So I'll say SSH username at the IP address. And we'll go ahead and copy this password. And now we are in the machine. So I can go ahead and print out the present working directory and you can see that we're at slash home slash master slash applications. If we go into that, we then have the generic name for this specific project. We'll go into that and list out the files and you'll see that we have our Laravel app inside of this public HTML folder. So I can go ahead and print out this directory and this is the path right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this path and I'm going to paste this into the deploy path. So this is where we want our project to be deployed to. So we actually don't specify the password. So what we need to do is we need to add our SSH key to our Cloudways server. So we're gonna say that we want to add an SSH public key. And I'm just gonna call this my laptop. Okay, and then inside of terminal, I can go ahead and run a command to copy my SSH key to my clipboard. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it in and click on submit. Okay, so now I've added my SSH key. I should be able to SSH now into this server without adding a password. So let's go ahead and try that. So SSH, I'm going to SSH into that machine and sure enough, it doesn't ask me for a password. So that means that my SSH key has been successfully added to the server. So now we have our deploy.php, which is going to deploy this repository to this host with this user and this deploy path. So I'm gonna go ahead and try out a deploy, but I know that we're gonna get a few errors and then we're gonna kind of step back and work through those errors so that way you can see some of the updates that we need to make. So I'm going to go to the project and I'm going to run dep deploy. Okay, so it looks like things were going pretty good up until it did the composer install and it actually says that we have a PHP 7.4 when we have an 8.0 minimum requirement. So we can go ahead and modify the version of PHP on our server by going to the manage services. Actually, that's going to be inside of settings and packages. And then we'll go over here to packages and we see that we have PHP 7.3. We want to update this to PHP 8.0. Okay, and after we've updated PHP to 8.0, why don't we go ahead and update to the latest database? So we're using MariaDB 10.1. Let's go ahead and use 10.4. And if you're unfamiliar with MariaDB, don't really be too concerned. It is essentially the same thing as MySQL. I know people will argue and say that there's many differences, but as far as like programming your application and the different queries that you're gonna write, it's pretty much the same. Okay, so now that we have updated both PHP and the database, let's go ahead and try this command again. So we're gonna run dep deploy. And I actually know that we are going to run into one more error. And I kind of like to show you this just that way you can, I can show you how we work backwards. But after we fix this, then we'll be able to run a successful deployment. So now the message that we're getting is that we can't connect to the database forge at localhost. So this means that it's not detecting the correct ENV file. 
So let's jump back over to our server and I'm going to need to re-SSH first. And after I'm in, I will go into my folder and the public HTML and I'm going to show you where some of the new files are going to live. So inside of this shared folder, we have a storage and then we also have a .env file. So inside of the shared folder is where the storage and our .env is going to live for our application. Let me go over, head over to the deployer documentation and they will show you these new files. So the .dep file is essentially, it's gonna contain information about the deployer info. And then we have current, which is actually going to be where our application is going to point to and we will change that in our Cloudways dashboard. So this is going to point to the current release that we are working on. So as we do a new deploy, we're gonna have releases one, releases two, and this is going to point to our current release. The releases is going to contain all the different deploys that we deploy to our server. And then we have the shared folder, which is gonna contain our .env and our storage, because these are never going to change. These are always going to be the same, but the thing that is going to change is the release that is the current release for our application. So let's jump back over. And what I want to do is I'm just going to remove the storage and the .env from this folder. Okay, so now if I go back and I list out this public HTML actually contains the default Laravel application that was installed when we booted up our server. So if I were to open up this env file, we're gonna see that we have the database and the username actually doesn't look like that it is correct here. So we need to update that. Let's go ahead and change the database name to the correct name for our database. So we'll copy that, paste that in there, and then we'll copy the password and put that in there as well. Okay, so now we need to move this .env into our shared folder. So we'll say move .env into shared slash .env. And then we also want to move the current storage folder into this shared env as well. So we'll say mv storage into shared slash storage. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try our deploy. So let's come back here, keep our fingers crossed and run our deployment. And now we're getting a few issues here. Let me see what this is. Okay, this is actually saying that it's having, it's not able to write to this specific um, directory. So there is, I guess, one more thing that we gotta update. So let's go ahead and go into, I believe this is our application settings. Yeah, and we want to reset the file folder permissions to be this current user. So be, by default, it's this nxre user. We want to change it to be the master underscore user. So I'm going to refresh. And then we're going to try that deploy one more time. And it looks like everything deployed successfully. So let's jump over to our server and let's take a look at what we have differently here. So we have our releases folder. We have our current folder. So let's go ahead and go into the current folder. And if we list out the present working directory, it's going to look like that it's actually in the public HTML current. And if we list it out, it looks like it is the Laravel application. But this is actually linked to our releases slash one folder. So if I jump back one directory and then I list out the contents, we'll see that the current folder is actually a symlink to releases slash one. So if I were a CD into releases and we can CD into one, this is the current active release that is on the server right now. Um, but if we were to navigate to this URL right here, this is actually not going to take us to the correct place because we need to specify where our new web root is. So before the web root was public HTML slash public folder, but now it is actually going to be the current slash public. So let me go ahead and show you real quick. Okay. So here we are, we see it into the public HTML folder. And instead of this being the web root, the web root is actually going to be inside of the current and the public folder. So let's go ahead and change that inside of our application settings. We're gonna say that we want the web root to be public HTML 
and we'll say slash current slash public. Okay, so now that we've changed that, let's go ahead and reload this URL, and you're going to see that we have our Laravel application here in front of us. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's go ahead and make a modification to our routes web.php. And I'm just going to echo out a message here and just echo hello from deployer and cloudways. So I need to commit this. So I need to go into the project. I always do git status before I push to master or main in this case, git add all. And I'll give a message deploying first changes. Okay, so now that we push that to main, I can go ahead and run our deploy command, which is dep deploy. Okay, now go ahead and check this out. If we go back to our server and let's go into our public HTML folder and I'm going to list out the directory, you'll see that the current folder is actually now pointed to releases slash two. So this is the new release that we just pushed. And let's go ahead and go back here and let's reload the page. And you're gonna see that it actually is still showing the default Laravel app. And this is because we are using PHP FPM. And I think this is using an OP cache that needs to be cleared. Um, so what you'll probably want to do actually is programmatically clear this, but temporarily what you could do for now is you could just come in here and you can go to packages. Actually, that might be services. And then we have PHP FPM. Let's go ahead and restart that. And now if we go back up here and reload, we're gonna see that we get that message on our screen. So this is essentially how you would install Deployer to automatically deploy. What you'll probably want to do next and what I may actually do next is show you how you can get all of this to function from a GitHub webhook. So once you push to main, maybe it runs through this deploy command and then it also clears the OP cache. Now you can see that we can modify our application. We can then run our deploy command, which is then going to run all of our migrations, all of our artisan commands, and then it is going to move the current release to the latest release. And this is really cool too, because we could always jump back to a different release if we would like. So that is just the basics of how you would use Deployer to deploy your Laravel application using a Cloudways server. I hope this video was helpful, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I hope you guys are doing great, and I hope to see you in my next video.